Hey everybody, it's, uh, it's Darshan here. I'm here with Mahalo, who Hi. you might have seen in the live stream channelings if you watch them. He has been working with me about two years, we, we think, we yeah. reckon. Um, and I, we wanted to create a video that kind of gives people a deeper insight about what it's like to take these channel teachings to a deeper level to really integrate them. So there's some people that come to channeling and aren't really, um, they just want, tell me what about my future. Tell me about this. Tell me about that. And they get a vague, vague answer <laughs> that um, might be satisfactory in the moment, but the, this is a co-creation. So these beings are coming that we can raise our frequency to these higher octaves. And when you can actually do that, it makes a much bigger difference. And just wanted to talk a little bit with about that today with Mahalo, who has gone on quite a journey. So where were you at when we began? What was your kind of feeling state? Because you, your whole, you claim uh, that your whole, whole personality has changed. I wouldn't use those words. Oh, let me, let's go back to the old yeah. question, which is what was happening kind of yeah. the day that I reached mm -hmm. out to you and had my first private consultation. So I was in disaster. I was in big disaster. I was in big chaos. And it was the third time a similar pattern happened. And it was my worst fear of all my life came and kicked me. Ah. And I decided actually to approach it a different way. Yeah. And... <laughs> and you were kind of skeptical at first. Totally. You were like, who are these beings? How do they know? And we were talking a little bit just now. You're not even sure that they're who they claim they are. You see them in a different way. Um, Don't tell Dante. <laughs> But, I mean, everyone has their own relationship with them anyway. So that, how did that skepticism dissolve? What was that process like? Because it was not long after that you were really palpably feeling their energy, just even though our calls were getting intercepted and we could barely communicate. I thought that was very... It, yeah, we had, I was in Cambodia and you were in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of broken well, connections. Yeah. And it was, it was very frustrating for you because it kept cutting out. And... Yeah. Um, but it's beyond the words, there's an energy transmission. How I think already in that? the first one, mm -hmm. but certainly by the second one, it was clear that I was feeling the most abundant, loving love mm. of my life during the moments when you're channeling. Now, that's got to be different for everybody. I'm sure that other people don't feel that. But it was true for me that I could hardly speak and I would just giggle instead of I'd have some questions, I would just sit and giggle. And it would be dis disconnected, and then after a few minutes, well, well the ending was getting really frustrated, like, you know, and connect back, and I'm going, I'm, I'm, I, I was like, hi. I was like, hi, because it often happens when you channel that I feel, and I go in my spine, my spine, especially my spine, it's like being hugged, it's like a loving energy. So something very real. And I think it was there in the first section as well. But yeah, so, I mean, that, that, that is real. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. And I remember you said at one point that you didn't feel you could trust your passion or it was kind of counter to the experience when you first heard that word. Like, what was that like for you? It was that moment of like hearing this message. It's all about following your And I still... I still am nervous about this phrase for you, I I just, anyway, <laughs> so, I, I might, I might choose a different one, but yeah, what, what, what happened was, um, before I contacted you, I had sent a clever, clever email question. You said, oh, that's beautiful. And you asked it in a public session. I, I submitted it. And my question was clever, clever. If you were in our human shoes, what question would you think is the most important question to ask? And the answer was a general public information that hit me like a bell. It, it, bam, it went in me and like, no, and I couldn't, I couldn't do any more contact or, or see your videos for a couple of months. Wow. It was, it was, it was huge. And it, I later discovered this is a message that is, comes from other channels. Yeah. And that message is follow your passion, do what most excites you. 
And the problem is, I grew up with parents who did not say that. Secondly, as a child, I naturally followed my passion, and again and again, why was I beat up? I mean, as a young adult, I had passion, and I did it. And the world was brutal. Over and over, I did exactly the steps that I now do. I'm not sure if it's a softer way, but I, I do now without it. Choose my out and insistent, baby. I, my interpretation of the world was different. The energy has been changing the world. I think, I think that um, at that time, the world was geared up and there was a climate where following your passion really got punished. I really got punished. I really got drastically punished because I knew that's what I wanted to do. So when I got follow your passion, it's like, no, oh, I've tried that. Honestly, that doesn't work. And it was months before I came back with a, a second question and, and all that. And it was, was boom, like a bell, because I knew it was right. Yeah. And yet, everything went, oh. Yeah, it's quite, quite strong. So there's a lot of collective belief systems, and it's something the council talks about a lot, that we learn um, these ways to kind of just be cogs in the machine of society where... Our passion isn't the most valuable thing. What's most valuable to the high, the powers that shouldn't be um, are is that we submit ourselves and we're subservient, and that we just follow orders, basically. <laughs> um, so the world is shifting out of that time, but we're making it happen. So the more that other people tap into their passion the more that it inspires others. And I can just see the ripple effect from my own life doing this is my passion, how many other people start to hop on board. And you don't necessarily have to be a channel coach, guide, whatever, shaman, this kind of person to um, let your passion be this radiant uh, inspiration that lets others start to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, I experienced some of the deepest healing doing things of this nature where at first I was afraid to channel even though I was hearing these voices inside my head and feeling this energy coming through in my meditation, my energy work. It was like, but channeling it, speaking it out loud, being one of those people, kind of weird. But every time going against that fear and listening to the higher calling inside, there's a tremendous healing and it gets easier and easier. You recently channeled about being worthy. Yeah. It's a very, very good channel, and it is a little bit of a journey I've made here, yeah. you know, in finding you, you are worthy, and that unworthiness is a delusion. Yeah. That, that you've channeled recently, it's just on my channel, it's fantastic. And it's, yeah, I think, I think the channel is, the session is called You Are Value. That's it, You Are you Value. Are That's the one, You Are Value. So check that out, and this goes really deep into these themes of how we can really recognize the system convinced us that we don't have value so that we would generate false value through actions that don't really inspire us and the radical it's not even that radical but the revolutionary change is that we bring love to ourselves and we let that love that's within us guide us to what's actually going to make the biggest impact for ourselves and for others and there is none of the more, there's more, no more of the separation because all is one. So if it fills you with love, that love is meant for so many other people too. Um, anyway. But particular people. This is something I love. Particular people. This, it's not for everybody. You are not for, I'm not for everybody. Yeah. Because before it was such a struggle with the people that didn't get your ideas, didn't understand the importance of your expression and even kind of criticized or devalued oh, yeah. creative expression. Oh, good, yeah. Oh good, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm very clear that it's a small audience. Yeah. When you when you find what you're passionate about, you find a lot of people saying no, thank you, and that's a very key part of it is to find that's great. And we're, I have my passion. Be patient. The people will fight you. So I've experienced a lot of distress and dissatisfaction trying to correct rejection trying to make things kind of palatable for people that it wasn't for. So this no insisting on an expectation is also when we 
can just see, oh, this person doesn't want that. This person rejects that. This person is uncomfortable with that. That is a great sign. Thank you, universe, that shows me that this co-creation can't happen. No matter what my fantasy is about this or what past moment made me think that this should continue, this isn't it. And I do see a lot of people online who get really caught in these loops about my wife, my partner, my kids, my parents, my old friend. It's like, well, if they don't get where you're going, don't take them with you. You're going to be miserable trying to take someone on this trip that they don't want to be on. And you're not going to be able to enjoy it and experience all of what it is. And anyway. but, but there is something I'd like to mention is that if you are still trying to persuade the person who is kind of rejecting you, you are blocking the real treasure, the person who comes after them. Yeah. Unless you let go of the person and, and accept no, that the next person's queuing up, and that is hard for us. That is hard for us to believe that we think this is the perfect person. How can a more perfect person exist? And you have to let go because yet the ideal. You're blocking. You're blocking the real person coming that will give you the energy. Oops. No. So are you happy enough? Anything. What? What do you? What do you think? What uh, what's your what, <laughs> doctor? Doc. What do you think? I don't know. It's all in you. I have to think about it. It'll take me some time. Can I get back to you on that? I'll send you an email when I've worked it out. Bush. And I've had a lifetime issue. You would not want to know my life. I don't, I don't want to go there. I, I had... No, let's not go there. Um, I've had decade after decade where I have been unable. I've never said I'm happy. I've never done this. How are you? Or better than that. I think, you know, when Americans, they have this, I'm better than, never been better. I, I've had, get out of my You know, because I've had bad time. All right, I'll tell you. All right, now don't tell anyone, People, this is a secret. I've had posming levels of transformation. Um, this sounds stupid, why should I talk about it? That's also the thing is, um, a light worker isn't a savior. We're going past that age, that age and that way of seeing things. We're not there to crusade, to convert, to help people, um, do something that they're not willing to do themselves. We're here to be examples, and we don't need to push our light at people who choose the darkness because it's only going to be trying like filling up a black hole, which cannot be done. So you shine like the light of the sun, but one day the sun will also become a black hole, but through that black hole, there's a portal to a parallel reality, and in that parallel reality, we are God and all is one. And that is the truth of the here and now, but we only experience glimmers of it in this illusion of physical time and space all right so that's what we've got for now thanks so much for watching and have a brilliant beautiful blessed day and we'll catch you next time ciao for now Spaceship of Babel, we are gliding through the stars on a 5 year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future now is dark, and you both hear us coming to whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here, and hope you can know as we whisper in the dark. Thank you.